There are so many investment options in South Africa. How do you know which is the best one to choose? In this video, I'm going to provide you a strategy for 2024, whether you are a beginner, intermediate or advanced investor. Hi, my name is Yolanda and on this platform, I give you easy, actionable tips, content and strategies that you can use to manage money well, to live abundantly and to build generational wealth. I'm the director of Solomon Wealth Management. We are a Durban based boutique financial advisory service and we work with South Africans all across the country and even South African expats. So no matter where you are in the world, as long as you are a South African citizen, I'm able to help you. And if you want to chat with me one on one, take the link where you're watching this video and uh, we can book an appointment and we can chat online. So we're talking about investments today and uh, the tips and strategies I'm going to give you, they're not age dependent. They're more dependent on where you are in your uh, investment journey, whether you are uh, a beginner, intermediate or more advanced. So if you're somebody investing for your kids, I'm going to give you tips about that as well. So remember, globally, the environment right now, we are uh, going into election years for most countries. Countries like the United States, South Africa, India are all going into big election years. We've seen last year, 2023, uh, countries like Argentina and Netherlands electing conservative uh, conservative parties to rule them, right? And if we get conservatives back in power in the United States, for me, I'm going to see, I'm going to be expecting the oil prices to drop because the Republicans are most likely going to open up that Keystone pipeline. And that will, that's going to really bring down prices of, of, of oil globally, right? That would bring down inflation as well. So if you are a beginner, I mean, you want to invest, you don't know how to invest. And if, if the problem you have is you don't have cost and cash flow, maybe you're a commission earner, you're a freelancer. My best tip that I can give you is save in your bank. Work towards getting your first 10,000 Rand that you can start investing with. But you got to have that money behavior and that mindset and that discipline and that consistency to put that money away. All right, so if you are a beginner, your first point is to get together your first 10,000 Rand. They make an appointment to see an advisor who will advise you as to where you can put that money. Ideally, if I'm, I'm speaking to a client like this, I'd say, okay, you got your first 10,000, great. Let's invest this 5,000 and we'll do a risk assessment. We'll understand your needs and your goals and then we'll find the best investment for you. And I'll send you back and I'll say, right, get, your, get this fund back up to 10,000 again and then come and see me. And then they work on that cycle for somebody who does not have consistent cash flow. Now, if you are a beginner and you do have constant cash flow, if you're somebody who's managing your money well, you uh, are able to ensure that your expenses do not exceed your income, you're being diligent in like, trying growing that gap. And now you have a uh, thousand, two thousand, three thousand rand to put away every month. This is what you should do. So I'll play the fact. My, my recommendation is always to go to the lowest tax option first. And in South Africa, we have tax free investments. Now, we have different providers in the country providing you with tax free investments from the banks to various asset managers. Right? You can be safe and use the bank products and get no amounts of interest. Uh, downside on that is that interest barely keeps up with inflation. Now, the goal of investing is that we want to grow our wealth to shield from inflation and to shield from taxes as well. And if you're on the right kind of portfolio in a tax-free investment, you can do that nicely. All right. Now, the tax-free investment is only if you are not going to touch this money for five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. A tax-free investment is a long-term investment. And when you sit with your advisor, they will be able to tell you how you can utilize the tax-free investment for wealth building. Some of the benefits of the tax-free investment is one, zero taxes on whatever gains that you get, zero taxes on withdrawal as well. The various limits on that is a maximum of 36,000 rands per year and a lifetime maximum of 500,000 rands per South Africa. And per South Africa is important because this is something nice that you can start up for your kids as well. So since kids have a longer time in the market, just a small investment for them, invest and forget about it and let them unlock it later on in life. That's a perfect example of, of money working for you or working for your kids, all right? So that's your long-term investment if you're a beginner. Now, if, you, if you're a beginner and you need something short-term, maybe you're saving up to uh, buy a car and you need a deposit for a car or a house or a fancy holiday or something like that, your next solution that you want to look at is a unit trust. Right? The key thing about a unit trust is you have easy access to this money. 
Uh, there are taxes involved. For example, there would be interest once you exceed your interest exemption, depending on your age. Uh, there would be dividends tax of 20% uh, that you would need to pay within the unit trust uh, investment wrapper. The nice thing about the unit trust, if it's in your own personal name or uh, a human being, an individual, essentially is that um, when you trigger, when you withdraw your unit trust, you trigger capital gains tax if there's a profit. If there's no profit, the capital loss is basically rolled over to your next uh, financial year. But if there's a gain, the first 40,000 of that gain is exempt and you won't pay taxes. And then if there is a gain after that first 40,000 rand, only 40% 40 of that gain will be used to calculate your taxes as per your national tax rate. So very low, low tax structure, which is very tax efficient compared to other tax wrappers. So if you are in the short term, this is a great uh, option for you. But to make it work for you as a short term investment, picking your portfolios within the unit trust is key. And that is something a financial advisor would assist you with. That's depending on your goals and your risk profile. If you are getting value from this content, please hit the like button and be sure to subscribe to this channel so whenever I put out content like this, you will be the first to know about it. And when you do like this video, it will help me reach people just like you that need to know this information. So share, like, subscribe and uh, help, help me get some traction on this video so we can help more people just like you. But if you are an interme intermediate investor, you've been investing for a while, your first uh, step that you need to do is to max out your tax free investment of 36,000 grand a year. Again, you're going to sit with your advisor and you're going to pick the right kind of portfolios to reach your goal and match up with your risk tolerance. And the same thing applies for a unit trust if you're an intermediate investor, right? Whether you are investing for the long term or the short term, how you structure the unit trust and the portfolios would, uh, that you pick will be goal dependent. Obviously, if you have a long term goal, depending on your age as well and what it is that you want to achieve with, with investing that's how we'll go and put big cuts for you another thing that you can look at as an intermediate investor is an endowment an endowment is a great tool it's a great estate planning tool it's, it's a great tax shield if you are in a tax bracket that's greater than 30 percent i find that it's a great uh, generational wealth holding tool because unlike a unit trust or tax reinvestment, those two investments, when you die, it, they actually get paid into your estate. But with an endowment, two things can happen, and you can set this up uh, when you set up your investment, endowment investment policy. One, your endowment, the ownership can transfer, so it doesn't die with you, which is very, very cool, very nice, and lots of benefits with that. Or it can pay out to a beneficiary just like a night policy. And that's also a really nice benefit as well. So if you're an intermediate uh, investor, an endowment is a good thing for you to start looking at as well. I wouldn't recommend an endowment to be your first investment. Go with the tax-free investment for that. What you'd also want to do is retirement planning, depending where you are. Like I said, when I started this video, the strategies that I share are not age-dependent. But if you are already started in your journey, whether you're 20, 30 or 40, all right, you got to be retirement planning and, and now is, it's never too early to start retirement planning. The earlier you start, the less effort you actually have to make and the greater your return if you're getting the right kind of advice and making the right kind of investment goals. No matter where you are in your journey, especially if you're somebody in your, in your 40s, with 40s, I would advise you to sit with your advisor and plan as if you're going to retire today and then tell your advisor, if I have to retire today, how much will I have? How much will I need? How much will I need to put away, right? And start understanding what's going to happen to you at the point of retirement and post-retirement, what your plan should be looking like. Yeah, that will help you understand this process better. As we with so many clients, when they're reaching 55, 60, 65, they're hearing information for the first time on retirements. And if they knew this information 10, 15, 20 years ago, they would end up with a lot more money. Okay, so it's never too early to invest for retirement. If you are an advanced investor, best thing that you could do is look at offshore investments, right? At this time, you are familiar with tax-free investments, you're familiar with unit trust, you're familiar with endowments. Offshore is where you need to be. Problem is, in South Africa, about 20 years ago, we had about 700 plus companies on the JSC. Today, we're sitting at under 300, which means our options are getting less and less and less. And offshore, you you got more options there. You can go anywhere. 
And as a South African, you have the single discretionary allowance of 1 million rand. And if you exceed that 1 million, you have that 10 million, that's a little bit more complicated, something I can help you with. Uh, but you're allowed to take up to 10 million out of the country every year. Why you want to be offshore is one, you want a shield from taxes, if you're in the right type of investment wrapper. Two, you want to hedge the rand because the rand, the value of the rand is dropping dramatically. So inflation will always be linked to a weak rand because a big indicator of inflation is the oil price. And if you can shield from that uh, devaluing of the rand, the sweeter your retirement and wealth building uh, is going to be in South Africa. And offshore is going to allow you to do that. You can also start looking at shares if you are a more advanced investor because now you will have a better understanding of risk and how much risk that you're willing to take. So in my experience, most of my clients, uh, they've got millions and millions saved. Sometimes you've got millions in your bank account, not the base, best move. But a lot of people are not ready for the risk of the equity markets, and stocks and shares. Okay, and there we can fill in a gap for you, give you a blend and, and a balance of conservative and aggressive. But shares is always a thing that you can, you should be looking at. And like I said, in the JSC, it's shrinking, but there are pockets of growth. There are dips that you can take advantage of, and there are trends that you can take advantage of. You, you just got to pay a lot of attention, and, and it takes effort to be monitoring the JSC every day, doing the various analysis, try and pick the right kind of stocks that are going to give you the, the right kind of return. And again, with equities, you got to have a long-term view. If you don't have a long-term view, you don't have the risk appetite, stay away from shares. And at this stage, as an, a more advanced investor, you've accumulated something, you've got some money in, uh, put away in various kind of pots, the state planning is key. Now, state planning is when you plan your exit, and your exit from this planet and passing all of these assets that you've accumulated. If you haven't had the, the full opportunity to enjoy it to the fullest, you want to pass that on to your beneficiaries in the most tax efficient manner. And that is the basic estate planning process. A highly legal environment. I don't recommend that you do this on your own and a will is not a state plan. So here you're to sit with your advisor and get the right kind of advice and put the right type of shields in place so that your wealth is not unnecessarily lost to the government and it goes to your beneficiaries as well. So this is my tips on your investments and what you should be looking at. Remember that the content of this video is not financial advice. Any content of mine that you see online is financial education. Financial advice is when you sit with an advisor one-on-one -on -one and you get personalized advice according to your needs, your goals, your priorities, and your circumstance. If you want to sit with me one-on-one, -on -one, you take the link where you're watching this video or go to my website, solomonwealth.co.za, and I would love to chat to you one-on-one. -on -one.